Hello, welcome to my channel and thanks for tuning into this video. Today I want to talk about my 2020 makeup favorites. So I've got lots of products to talk about and I thought it would be fun to apply some of them to my face while I'm going through my favorites of the year. I do have a little bit of makeup on. I had things to do this morning out and about, so I have a little bit of makeup on, but I'm gonna put quite a bit more on. One of the things that I have on already is the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. This was actually a new discovery for me this year. Certainly not a new release at all. It's been out for years and years, but I had never tried it before this year and I've gone through quite a lot of it. So I, I first had a little sample size that I went through, then I went through one of their standard full size jars of it and now I'm working on this jumbo size here and I think this is going to last me for a pretty long time. I use this every single day. It's the last part of my skincare routine in the morning and sometimes I even mix it in with my foundation if I'm wearing foundation that day. So I do already have some of that on, and I also have some of the Glossier Stretch Concealer on, which is another one of my favorites for this year. I have it in the lightest shade, which is G12, and this is just a really nice sort of all-around concealer. It has a more sort of um, moisturized finish, and I really like this especially for sort of a no makeup makeup look because it just blends in so nicely with the skin. Again, it looks really, you know, fresh and moisturized and it's just a really nice product. It's quite emollient, so it blends very easily and you don't have to cover your whole face with it to make it work. It just, you can put it exactly where you want, blend it out and it works perfectly. I like to use it with this Sephora concealer brush. This was on sale a lot over this year for five Canadian dollars. So I have a couple of them. And it's just a little synthetic concealer brush. Actually, I use this for all my concealers. So this is another favorite. I don't know if it's still available, but it'll probably pop up here and there um, on the Sephora site from time to time. Now I also have my brows done already. I didn't have any like specific favorite brow products this year but I did use a lot of the Benefit brow products. All of those I like and I just but there's no one product that I kind of go to from day to day. I just sort of go with what I'm feeling like and normally with my brows I just want to get them over with as soon as possible. Another one that I've liked this year but it's more um, recent for me is the Dior, the little skinny Dior brow pencil. It doesn't have a top on it but it has a spoolie on the end. That I really like particularly because I'm able to get it in uh, an auburn shade, which kind of matches to my hair quite nicely. And it's just really easy. It's a really thin little pencil. It's really easy to just quickly throw on those brows and have that over with. I also like to use a clear brow gel sometimes, like if I'm using a colored pencil like that. What I've been using is, it's just a CoverGirl. It's a clear mascara that I can remember using back when I was a teenager and you know I thought I wonder if they still make that they do so I have that and I kind of just use that um, as my brow gel so I want to actually start now applying some foundation my number one favorite foundation for the year no contest is the Shiseido Synchro Skin this is just perfect it's it does everything you want a foundation to do it's uh a medium coverage but you can sheer it out to make it a bit lighter you can build it to make it a bit of a fuller coverage it has a very natural finish it's not super glowy it's not super matte it just looks like skin but it has great coverage and it wears really really well so if anyone is sort of looking for a great you know middle of the road but that's not to say mediocre just middle of the road in the terms of it can do what you want it to do and um, it will work for you. The Shiseido Synchro Skin is the way to go in my opinion. Today I'm going to pump it out just like one little pump on the back of my hand and since I think I want a little bit of a lighter coverage which I generally do with this foundation or with any foundation really I'm going to mix it with something, which is another favorite for me this year, the By Terry Brightening CC Serum. I've gone through a couple of these this year. I had the Starlight Rose one earlier on in the year, which came out last holiday. It's kind of a more pink color. 
This one is the um, lightest color. It says white rose here is the color of it. They have also, I think, an apricot one and um, another pink one, and then there's a bronze one. And I really love the bronze um, version of this over the summer. It just gave me a little bit more uh, warmth and color to my skin. And it was great to use sort of more as a priming uh, step underneath foundation or tinted moisturizer but it also works really well just sort of mixed in with a foundation or a tinted moisturizer or you know even just on its own. This product gives a really nice sort of glowing from within effect. This is a great one. It does have quite a strong scent which I'm not a huge fan of. Um, so I'm just going to take one pump of that and I'll mix them in together. Yeah so it has quite a strong rose scent. Um, it's the same scent that most by Terry products have um, that I've come across. So if that's a problem for you, you probably won't like this. As I say, I don't love the scent, but I can deal with it. And you just kind of get used to it. And this Shiseido foundation, I should say, applies equally well with a nice foundation brush or with a sponge, just depending on your preference and what kind of uh, finish you're going for that day. The brush, um, as with any foundation brush, is gonna give you a little bit more coverage and stay a little bit more true to the sort of natural finish of the foundation itself. Since I'm using the By Terry Serum, that's gonna give me a little bit more of a glow from this, which I really like. Just depends on my mood though, what I'm going for. The other thing about the Shiseido is I think it looks really good in um, photographs and like on video. This brush, I don't know if I should talk about it. I only got it recently, but I really, really love it. I think I'm gonna do a separate video on this at some point next year. This is the Westman Atelier. Um, I think it's called a blender brush. Blender brush or buffing brush, I'm not sure which one. But um, yeah, I'll talk more about this in another video, but. This is another favorite of the year, even though I got it pretty recently. I will throw a little bit more concealer on, and this time I'm going to use the Giorgio Armani uh, Power Fabric Concealer. This is another favorite for me for this year. I bought this at the end of last year, and I didn't use it for a while. I really didn't like it when I first got it. I just, I couldn't get it to work for me. It wasn't, it wasn't doing what I wanted but I've played around with it a lot more since and it has become one of my favorites for this year. It has a more matte finish, but it doesn't look dry or anything as long as you don't use too much of it, I find. I only use quite a small amount of it. It doesn't have an exceedingly high coverage, but I like that for a concealer. I don't want my makeup to look, you know, too cakey or too mask-like or anything, so. Um, I, I really enjoy this and it feels very lightweight. You can't feel it on the skin really at all. And it just blends in very, very easily. And for powder, I have a couple of favorites. So I would say my overall favorite for loose powder was this La Mer, the powder. I had never tried this before this year. And um, I've tried a lot of different loose powders over the last few years and this is by far my favorite. There's just something about this. I find it gives me the most sort of natural finish. It doesn't look overly powdery on the skin. It doesn't look dry like I find a lot of loose powders do. And uh, it's just, it's really nice. So that's my pick for loose powder this year. But I do also like to use pressed powders from time to time. So the one I want to show you right now is this Chantecai uh, Blurring Powder. Now again, I was a bit hesitant to include this as a favorite because I got it pretty recently, but this is just kind of what I've always been looking for in a powder. It doesn't look like powder at all on the skin, but it provides the function of a powder in that it will give you a little bit of a um, setting. So if you like to just set a little bit really lightly under your eyes, it'll do that for you. It'll set around your nose. This will do the trick, but it's, it's a balm powder, so it's quite moisturizing. And for me, I really like the shade of this too because it's quite light. I also love the Chantecaille Hummingbird powder this year, and I used that 
all the time in the summer but it is quite it's quite yellowy in tone and it is a translucent powder so it's not a huge issue but I think I just prefer to save that for the summertime when I'm going for a slightly um, deeper and warmer skin tone whereas in the winter this is just absolutely perfect for me plus it's a little bit less uh, dry than the hummingbird one although the hummingbird powder is not doesn't look dry at all either but this one almost gives you a little bit of a very slight like mattified glow almost so I really like that now let's move on to bronzer blush and highlight so for bronzer I had a few favorites actually so the tower 28 bronzino this is in the shade west coast it's the one that's a little bit lighter um, this I used, I'm not going to show you because there's cat hair in it and it looks really gross. I'll have to clean that before I use it next time. But um, that one I used a lot in the summer. It has a beautiful glowy finish and it has a translucency to it that uh, ju it just looks really, really beautiful on the skin. So I love that one. I'm not wearing it as much in the winter just because it is a little bit deeper and I don't really go for deeper bronzers so much over the winter time. The other one that I used all the time in the summer, which I usually um, would actually set the Tower 28 with this one, just a light dusting of this. This is the Guerlain Terracotta Nude. So this is supposed to be a shade that kind of adapts to the skin tone of the wearer. I don't know if that's true, but I do know that I like the shade of this. It has a little bit of kind of pinkiness to it. Don't know if yeah you can see that a little bit of pinkiness to it which is good for my cool toned skin gives a bit of a more natural effect of you know, what the sun actually does to my skin which is turns it pink or red and uh it has a nice again it has a bit of a sort of translucency to it and uh, a glowiness which i really love so that's another one and then in the winter i have been mostly using this charlotte tilbury um, airbrush bronzer in fair. It's fair enough for um, these, you know, winter months when I'm not getting any sun at all. And it's it's uh, warm enough and has enough color to it that I can use it for, you know, warming up and a bit of sort of very light sculpting or contouring, but it's not going to look overly bronzy or overly orange or anything like that. So I'm actually going to use some of this right now with another one of my favorites for the year, which was the Wayne Goss um, Artist Collection brushes. This one in particular is the large one. This is my number one favorite from the collection. And I just think it's great for bronzer for me because it is a, quite a fluffy brush, doesn't pick up too much product. So you can put on a very light amount or you can you know build it up a little bit more but it also gives a nice diffused effect so i really enjoy this brush especially for bronzer and just because i'm here i threw a little bit of the girl on on as well concentrating it more you know up closer to the uh, back part of the cheekbones just for a little bit of added depth there and next i want to move on to blush so blush is one of my absolute favorite makeup categories i'd say blush and lips are probably my my uh, top favorite types of makeup so for blush i wanted to talk about just a couple um the first one is this sisley orchid rose this is their um highlighter blush and this again is another one that's been out for years and years, but it was, it came into my life this year. And this is, I think, probably my favorite blush of all time. It's just perfect. The color is perfect for me. I love that sort of cool toned pink and it has a beautiful glow to it. Very subtle, but again, it sort of gives you one, that um, sort of lit from within impression. So that is probably my number one blush from this year. Other blushes that I really liked were the Charlotte Tilbury, um, what is this, Pillow Talk Lip and Cheek Glow. I don't think this is available anymore, but I hope that she brings it back. It's a really beautiful blush. 
as you can see, I've gone through quite a lot of it. I use this pretty much every day. It's kind of the first blush that I put on usually. So after I've done my foundation or concealer, then I just throw a little bit of this on. I really like the color of it. This is the color of Dreams, which was the lighter of the two colors that came out. And I love the finish of it too. It's very emollient, so it gives you a nice sort of dewy and really fresh finish. It's not long lasting for me anyway, but if you top it up with another blush, then they can work together and that'll make your blush last a little bit longer. Other blush favorites, um, which again, I haven't been wearing these too much in the winter time. I kind of put these away with my summer makeup, but I, I wanted to show them because I wore these all summer. These are the Chantecai um, Radiant Cheek and, oh, <laughs> the label's rubbed off. Radiance Cheek Cheek and Highlight Duos. So I have the coral one, which is the one with the um, manta ray on it. That's the coral one. And this is the rose one. I got more wear out of this just because pink blush is, is kind of my go-to. If I don't know what I'm gonna be doing with my makeup, I go for a pink blush. And these were both really, really beautiful. They're quite hard pressed in the pan. They can be a little bit hard to pick up with your brush if you're not using the right kind of brush, but I find um, like undyed goat hair, like this refer one here works really well. And also this, which is a mix of dyed and, uh, and undyed. This is the uh, Sonia G Mini Cheek. That works really nicely as well. Um, that can actually work for the blush, but I use it, use it mainly for highlight. The last blush that I wanted to mention for this year was the Tom Ford uh, Incandescent Duo here. So I use both of these products quite a lot. The highlight, it's not a very light color, so it's not a highlight on me in the sense of, you know, providing a, a lighter color that lifts the cheekbone in that way. It's more of a sort of just glowy, um, sheeny kind of product that I, I still use it where I would put any highlighter. It's very nice. It's not too deep. It doesn't give me that dark cast or anything. And the blush, um, that's really my favorite part of this duo. It's just such a beautiful color. It's, um, it seems like it has a lot of colors in there. So it has a little bit of a red undertone. It definitely has some pink in it. Um, it almost even looks like it has some more sort of plummy leaning toward purpley in it. So it's just a really beautiful blush. And if I'm going for a little bit more of an intense, um, stronger blush, then this is usually what I will go for. And I think I'll actually use this today. So I'm going to go in with one of my new brushes from the Sonia G Kiyaki set. And just put that on. All right, I put a bit more on than I think I normally would. I just wanted to really show up nicely on, on the uh, screen here. So that's the Tom Ford Incandescent Duo. When it comes to highlight, I kind of had a hard time there choosing a favorite. I didn't feel that I had any one or even two sort of like particular favorites that I always went to this year. I think I'm still in search of the perfect highlight. So that's something fun to occupy my next year. But I did want to mention this Dominique Cosmetics Skin Gloss. This is the lightest one. It's the Golden Dew shade. This is a really gorgeous cream highlighter. I find it lasts really well on the skin. It gives a beautiful glowy sort of a glass-like effect on the skin. It's just, it's just gorgeous. I only wish that they had a shade that was a little bit um, sort of frostier or icier than this. This isn't too, too uh, dark for me or anything, but I think for me, a little bit of a cooler toned uh, highlighter would be absolutely perfect. But this is great for a lot of makeup that I like to do. It goes really beautifully with it. So that's that was a great one for this year. Again, I don't think it came out this year, but I discovered it this year, or I added it to my collection this year. And then other highlighters, I did use the ones in the those Chantecai duos that I showed you quite a lot, and I used the Tom Ford one here. Um, I think that's all, like I don't, yeah, as I said, I don't really have a particular favorite. So I think what I will do is actually dip into this Manta Ray 
and I'm going to use that one. It looks quite deep in the pan, but once you put it on the skin, it's not too deep. Again, kind of like the one in the Tom Ford Duo, it's not going to give me that really lifted, highlighted look because it's not paler than my skin tone, but it has a beautiful sheer kind of coverage to it. This has a little bit of, it looks, it's a lot more pink on the skin than it looks in the pan. And it has a, a beautiful, beautiful glow to it. So I'll just throw a little bit of that on. And let's move on now to eyes. Now again, for eyes, like with highlight, I had a hard time coming up with like a true number one favorite for this year. And I think the main reason for that is I really haven't worn very much eyeshadow this year at all. Eyeshadow hasn't been as big of a part of this year for me, but I do have some products that I would like to talk about. So one that I was using a lot more at the beginning of the year, sort of before lockdown happened, when I was traveling um, quite a bit, this Tom Ford Golden Mink that came out at the end of last year was absolutely a favorite for me. I love this palette. This shade here is perfect for me. I love the tone of it. Um, it's a pretty light tone. It's taupey, but not too cool. It's not too warm. It has a bit of a pink in its undertones, which is perfect for me. And this deeper brown is really great too. These shadows are very, very soft, very easy to just really throw on your eye super quickly. You can do just that one. Uh, or you can do that one and then, you know, deepen out your outer corners and um, you add a little bit more definition to the look with the darker brown. And then these two topper shades I didn't use as much, but these are beautiful too. They do look quite similar once you sort of put them on the eye. And maybe you can see that on my finger, but you can tell that this one is a lot pinkier. This one's a lot golder. Um... They will, in my opinion, they'll still give you a little bit of a different overall effect if you're just using one rather than the other. You can get a bit of a gradient effect if you want to use both of them in different spots on the eye, or you can just mix them together. Okay, this is um, an absolute favorite for me this year, and particularly in the earlier part of the year. A couple of other eyeshadow favorites. This Charlotte Tilbury Bejeweled Eyes to Hypnotize. I haven't worn it very much, but I did a video on it on my channel. It was one of my earliest videos. And um, it, this is a favorite in terms of just the, the quality of the product and the effect that it had on me in terms of I was really, really impressed by this. This is a stunning palette, and if you like these colors, I would get this. Uh, it is, I believe, limited edition since it's a holiday release, although I know that, you know, even Charlotte's palettes from two holidays ago, you could still get your hands on them from, from time to time. So it's probably not going to be gone forever, even if it does go at some point. But this was just such a, a really, really beautiful quality palette. And then another one, which again, I kind of hesitated to include this in my favorites because I got it very, very recently, only a couple of weeks ago, but I've used this probably six or seven times now. And every time I've been thrilled with the results, it's a pleasure to use. Um, it's just a perfect palette for me. I love all the neutral tones. You've got a nice variety, even though they are all neutrals. And the only thing that I wish is that this had sort of a dusty pink matte in it as well, because I just think that would be a beautiful addition to this palette. But um, it's a small criticism because there really is nothing wrong with the palette at all. It's beautiful and it will give you gorgeous, gorgeous eye looks. So again, one that I have not had for too long, but one that I know I'm going to get a lot of use out of. So I do want to put a little bit of eyeshadow on. So I think I'm going to use, go back to the beginning of the year, pre-lockdown, go back into this golden mink uh, quad and just do a super, super quick and easy eye look. So I'll take this opportunity to talk about some other favorites of this year for me, which have been the Sonia G brushes. I bought my first Sonia G brushes just this fall. 
I've had my eye on them for a while and you know I've been hearing a lot of people talking about them and extolling their virtues and I just you know hadn't um, taken the plunge yet to to purchase any of them so I did that this fall and I'm really really happy that I did because I haven't been disappointed with any of the Sonia G brushes that I've gotten so far and I just think they're wonderful quality they work really well they do exactly what you want them to do on the eyes and I read somewhere actually that I think she first designed her brushes um, to kind of be used with the Natasha Denona shadows and the Natasha Denona shadows I think are my number one favorite um, eyeshadows that they're kind of what I started with when I started um, really getting into makeup and using you know the higher end spectrum of makeup and they so they hold a really soft spot in my heart and I'm used to working with them too and these Sonia G brushes really really work well with the Natasha Denona shadows. They work well with every shadow I've used them with so far though to be fair. So what I used first was the classic crease. What I'm using now is the mini booster and I'm just using that deeper shade now to, like I said earlier, just to add a little bit more definition to the eye. And I'm going to grab another Sonia G. Actually, no, I'm gonna use a refer brush. This is the refer 02. This is another favorite of mine this year. It has a little bit more of a narrow point to it but it's good for like smudging shadows underneath the eye really quickly so I'm just using that lighter taupey shade here just really quickly under the eye and then I'll go into the brown and just pull it out along the edge there a little bit more depth And then I will go back into the mini booster. I'm wiping it off, going back into the taupe and just blending everything through. So normally using this, this palette, this is probably where I would stop short of, I would add a little bit of brown liner there. I think I'll do that now. Actually, I'll add the brown liner. I'm just gonna use, this is I think a Sephora collection brush that I often use for liners, just a little angled brush. And you can use it really quickly again and just with that dark shade, just slap that right along the lash line for a really, really quick smoky liner kind of effect without being too bold or dramatic. Just gives you that nice definition around the eye. All right, yeah, so this is normally where I would stop using this palette, but I think I'll go into these shimmers and I'm just going to mix them together with my finger and just sort of plop them on for a nice little sparkly effect. I have read reviews of this particular edition, which is like a special edition with the gold packaging. I've read that this is not the same quality and a lot of people were complaining that it's not as good as the original Golden Mink. I have never used the original Golden Mink so I can't comment on this, but what I can say is that I haven't had any issues with this palette myself and I really like it and I like the packaging too. Alright, so we're coming closer to the end. We just have to finish off the eyes and then I'm going to talk about lips. For eyeliners, my favorites this year were the Victoria Beckham Satin Kajal liners. The brown one in particular, which is called Coco, is my number one favorite, most used. I use it every day and I use it on my upper waterline. So I am going to use that today. But before I do that, I also wanted to talk about uh, my favorite mascara of the year which was this Gucci mascara. I went through a sample of this. I made it last a really long time. And then I finally, you know, used it all up and decided that I would go for the full size. There are a lot of good mascaras and a lot of good mascaras that you can get at the drugstore. 
I don't think it's necessary to buy a Gucci mascara, but I really, really like the effect of this mascara. I find it gives just nice, full, um, but not overly um, crazy kind of lashes. It's a nice dark black color, and I like the wand of it. Reminds me of the wands that I encountered when I was, you know, first starting to wear makeup as a teenager. It's not too big. I find those wands that are like really big and fluffy, I find them a little bit scary and uh, a little bit messy to use. So um, I just, it's just really easy to use and I like it and it looks beautiful out on the counter as well. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put some of the Victoria Beckham and Coco on and I'm going to put some of the Gucci mascara on and then I'll be right back. All right, eyes are finished and now it's time to finally move on to lips, one of my favorites. I have a few lip products that I want to talk about. The first is the By Terry Balm de Rose. This is an extremely expensive lip balm and I would not recommend buying it at full price. Um, By Terry has a lot of sales throughout the course of the year where you can get this um, at least half price. So it's still very expensive at half price, but I do really like these. So I have just the original one, which is a very pale pink. It doesn't really have any pigment to it. That's what I use at night as sort of my nighttime uh, lip balm, lip mask. And then during the day, I have a couple of these tinted ones. So this is the shade six toffee cream. And I really love this. It just it gives a little bit of tint, but it gives you all that nourishment that you really, really need and want from a balm. Again, it has a scent. It has that by Terry Rose scent. If that's a problem for you. You won't like this. I don't love that scent, but it's it's not a huge problem for me. So the uh, value of the product and the way it performs certainly outweighs the negatives uh, in terms of the scent of these by Terry products. So that uh, I love. And then moving on to more pigmented products. The Chantecaille Lip Veils were a big favorite for me this year. I just discovered Chantecaille products this year. I had heard of them before, but never purchased any, never taken the plunge, and I'm happy I did. I love these lip veils. They're my favorite lip formula that Chantecaille has, although I've only tried this one, the lip veil, and I've tried the lip chic. The lip cheeks are very nice too, but they're a bit more of a glossy finish, and they're a little bit thicker feeling. These ones feel quite thin on the lips while still feeling moisturizing. And the pigment, I think, for these is a little bit stronger. So even after the shine wears off on these, the pigment will stain your lips a little bit. And I just think they're beautiful. So I have two of them that I just picked out now. This one is uh, Tamarind, which is a beautiful sort of warm and wearable dark brown color. This one is Plumeria, which is a kind of dusty, mauvey, cooler toned uh, pink type of color. These both came out in their fall collection and they're just really stunning. Super easy to wear and super wearable colors too. I think partly because they have a little bit of that sheerness to them that allows your natural lip coloring to shine through. My number one favorite lips for this year and they'll probably be my number one favorite lips forever, are the Lisa Eldridge True Velvet Lipsticks. So she came out with four new shades of the True Velvets this fall. She came out with six new shades last fall, and her original three were three different shades of red. I have all of them, no regrets. They are perfect, perfect lipsticks. I love a matte lip, but I don't like a drying lip. These are a beautiful velvety matte finish. They are not completely uh, flat matte. They have a beautiful um, texture to them. They're just perfect. She has amazing colors too. So I just grabbed a few of them here. I don't think I could name a favorite shade. I have different favorite shades for different occasions. The one that I wear probably the most would be Velvet Fawn, which I think I brought out here. Yeah, Velvet Fawn. This one came out last fall, but it has remained a favorite for this year. So this is the sort of lightest of her Velvet Matte colors, and it's just a beautiful 
light neutral um, nude type of color but it doesn't wash you out it has that's the thing about the Lisa Eldridge lipsticks her colors are so spot on they work for pretty much everybody she does so much work with the undertones of her colors and balancing the tones and just something about what she does with the colors makes them wearable across such a wide spectrum of skin tones. Another one that I have here, this is Velvet Jazz. This is one of her original reds. It's actually my favorite of her three original reds. It's a beautiful sort of deeper, um, very complex red tone. I also have Velvet Affair here, which came out uh, this fall. This is one of the newest ones, and this is sort of in the same vein as Velvet Fawn, but a bit deeper and I think a bit warmer too. It has a little bit of a sort of toasted peachiness to it, which is just, it's absolutely gorgeous. And the last one I brought out today, this is Velvet Myth. This is a deep berry color. It came out last uh, fall but I didn't buy it until this fall because I thought that I had I thought that I had a MAC lipstick shade that was quite similar to this and I so I didn't buy this one last year but this is just so much more than than that MAC shade um well the MAC one is beautiful I think it's MAC Captive um I had bought that last fall quite um close to the time right before these came out so I couldn't justify it at the time but uh, I'm really glad I got it this year and completed my Lisa Eldridge Velvets collection. So as I said, it's a deep berry, but it has such vibrancy to it. It has beautiful pink tones in it. And I actually wore this uh, on Christmas this year. I wore it like for Christmas dinner. Uh, so I put it on probably two hours before dinner, did all the prepping and the talking and everything that comes um, with having, you know, a big family meal for Christmas and wore it through the meal. It was still like perfect after eating that whole Christmas meal. Um, the pigment was still on there. Of course, some of the finish had worn off, but it was stained to my lips and it there weren't any like, you didn't, you didn't have that thing going on where it's rubbed off on the inside of the lip. Um, it didn't smudge anywhere. It was just, uh, it was amazing. I didn't have to top it up the whole night. I was up till 11 o'clock that night and um, this stayed just amazing throughout the whole evening. All of her velvets are like that. So even like the lighter ones, like the Fawn, I've worn that through meals too. And it's just worn so beautifully. And the pigment has stayed on the lips. It doesn't dry out your lips. I, I can't say enough about these lipsticks. These are definitely number one in my heart, my favorite makeup products of all time. I did wanna talk about a couple of liners as well. For lip liners, I stick mostly to these Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencils. My number one favorite, which is right here. It's very small now. This is Wherever Walnut. Um, I also have Completely Sepia and Anywhere Caffeine. They're just very easy to wear and I really like the colors of them. They're not particularly long wearing, but I find that with a lot of long wearing lip liners, they have a texture that I don't appreciate so much. So I would actually prefer to wear this kind of a lip liner. I use this one almost every day. And then my other favorite lip liners are these Victoria Beckham ones. I have shades one, two, and three. I think two and three are my favorites on an everyday basis. They're quite similar to me to the Makeup Forever, but they last a little bit longer. So they're just a little bit better if you're wanting uh, the lip liner to, to stay on a bit longer. I would go for the Victoria Beckham. For today for my lips, I think I wanna go for a Velvet Affair and then I might throw a little bit of fawn on toward the center of the lips, we'll see. And for Velvet Affair, I'm gonna use the shade two of the Victoria Beckham lip liner. You don't need a liner with the Lisa Eldridge lipsticks, but I usually like to throw a liner on just to give me a bit of that shape to work within. And of course, a lip liner will also somewhat alter the tone of your lipstick, depending on how those tones play together. This one is gonna work, I think, really well with Velvet Affair. I also really like all of these lip liners, both the Victoria Beckhams and the Makeup Forevers. 
Uh, I like them on their own with just a little bit of balm thrown, thrown over them. So you could use just a clear balm or I really like these by Terry balms on top of them. Uh, it gives me enough color to my lips that it brings life to my face without looking like I'm you know, wearing a full on lipstick. So Velvet Affair, let's put her on. So I think you can see with this color, it's, I would say predominantly the effect is of a sort of brown, but it's much more than that. It's, it's a toned down color. You can see it has a little bit of pink in it. It has some of those warm, really toasty kind of peach tones in it. And I just think it's absolutely beautiful. And I don't think there's any touch up needed here. If you want your Lisa Eldridge velvet lipstick to last really, 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 really well, and for a really long time through eating, drinking, and so on. The best way is to put a thin layer on, let it sit for just like a minute or so, blot the out, outer, the top layer off, and then put another layer of it on. That's gonna really lock in the color and allow it to stain your lips really, really well. Whew, so that is all my favorites from this year, 2020. This has been quite a year for all of us, and uh, I hope that 2021 will bring us more joy and positivity, and I wish all of you all the best going into the new year. If you have any questions or comments or anything you'd like to say, just leave your comments down below. If you'd like to see more from me, I would love for you to subscribe. Right now my channel is mostly doing makeup looks, so I'm going to show you how I'm doing my makeup. I like to use uh, mainly high-end and luxury products, that's just what I find uh, the most enjoyable for me and what I find that I get normally the best results from. I also like to use, I like to test out new products. So uh, new releases that are coming out. I've just, I've done one on the Gucci foundation that just came out. I've done the Fenty glosses. I have some more new products uh, videos planned that are coming up in the new year. So if you'd like to see that type of content, I would, I would love to have you here. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoy seeing me talk about and use some of my favorite products. Happy New Year to everyone, and I will see you in the next video in 2021. Bye.